Howdy farmers, this afternoon we're going to talk about uh, the ways that we're going to be using some tools and how we're going to plant uh, the seeds and the transplants over the next two weeks. Um, we'll be doing some of each, each week. We have your beds or your rows that you're going to be planting in. Before we get into that, I want to tell you about what's in your bucket. So here's the things that are in your bucket. There are two one-foot stakes. Everything you need to plant a crop is right here. Two one-foot stakes, one's empty, one has string on it. We're going to stretch that string out between these two to precise measurement distance across the bed so that our rows are straight. Having straight rows makes all the cultivation and everything else a lot easier. So doing it to a high standard and having precision in this is very important. Also is a four foot stake. This is not just a stake, but it is a precision planting tool. I'll be showing you how to use this to open up the ground and to uh, press the ground in and then put the seeds in and then use this or a short stake to cover it. And finally, our tool of precision, a simple yardstick. This will tell us exactly how far apart that we can plant our seeds or our transplants so that we get them in exactly the right spacing because what we want to do is we want to make this area or the area of your garden as dense as possible. Then the bucket. Well the bucket has so many uses, most of them later on, but at this particular time we're going to be using the bucket to mix up a, uh, some uh, plant food, some tea that we can uh, feed the plant as we go. Now rather than dirty up this bucket, I made up some tea in an old-fashioned water bucket and we're going to be using that, but this is what you'll be using, this in a cup. And that's all you really need besides some instrument of persuasion to drive the stakes in when you need to. All right, so let's go to work and take a look. You'll see right here that I've already gone out and I've put one piece of string down and I've measured that string on both ends of the bed with my measuring. And what this says right here is that we're, in, in order to do this, what you want to do is find the middle of the bed and work to the outside because the outside edges of the bed are not perfect. So we want to be in the middle and that tells me that the end of my bed when I'm all done is going to be right here. The first thing we're going to be planting is six inches in from the outside. So I've laid this in the middle and I've set my string on this end and on the other end six inches from the outside of the bed or if you're going from the inside that's uh, 10, 11, 12, yeah about that <laughs> to get to the right distance. And so that's the spot where we're going to be placing our seeds. You know I've already set that string up to be six inches in. So you need to put, yes, that's correct. Say it. So he's going to set up his ruler and the middle will be uh, with the six inch mark here and the center will be 12 inches over from that. And that will put him at the center of a three foot bed at 18 inches. Now the most important thing that we're gonna make sure that we do is we're gonna pull this string tight and make sure that it's laying uh, uninhibited on top of the on top of the bed. May I use that hammer? Thank you sir. And I have it. It's already right there. I'm going to give you that back because I'm going to use the one I already have right there. Okay, now we're, we have our lines. This distance between here and here is what we call row spacing. Next, we're going to open up the rows and figure out our plant spacing. Opening up the row involves using our four foot stake. without moving it too much.
we're going to be planting a few carrot seeds. And carrot seeds happen to, so your catalog, your seed catalog will tell you how deep to plant things. This is about right. I could, now after I open it, I want to get a nice, even, flat planting spot. And so I'm going to press this in to the depth that I want. So what we're going to plant here is we're going to plant some carrots. This is a specialty carrot variety called yellow bunching carrots. These carrots will not be orange, they will be brilliant yellow. In order to plant very, very small seeds, a lot of times what a seed manufacturer will do is they will pelletize those seeds with an organic compound that goes around the perimeter of it to make it go through a, a planting machine, or in our case, with these big planting machines, it's very hard to handle those little bitty seeds. And so, once you have your seeds open and in the field, what you definitely want to avoid doing is dropping them because it's very hard to get them all picked up again. All right, so I'm gonna just lay my ruler in here. I know that my carrots need to be an inch apart. So I'm just going to very patiently put a carrot seed every inch. Now this seems like it could be a little bit tedious, and it is, but taking our time and doing this correctly makes every other aspect or every other job that we do in the field much easier. So I am not left-handed, so this is a little bit of a challenge for me. These seeds have a 90% or a 95% germination rate, so I really don't have to worry about them not coming up. And so I don't really have to worry about overseeding. Okay, once my seeds in place, I'm going to wet the seed in only in the seed bed. I don't really want to wet these areas out here because I don't really want to give the weeds a chance to get a head start on my seeds. I want my seeds to get a head start on the, on the, uh, on the weeds. And so uh, after that, I'm just going to take one of my tools here and I'm going to cover these. Might be easier like this. The things, if I was planting carrots that were not pelletized, this would get calibrated with some sand, and we would actually use the sand to cover them, just to make it easier for them to come up. Now you've probably heard it said that you should press down on top of this. Well, the reason that you would press them in just a little bit is to actually help the water wick up to the seed. So. I'm not going to worry about wicking the water up because I'm placing the water in now. And now my seed's planted and it's ready. In a few days uh, it will germinate and we'll start to have a carrot crop. At that time, we'll come back and we'll show you how to very gently lay the mulch in so we don't end up with a whole, having to do a whole lot of weeding as we go. When we transplant, we use the same basic tools, we just use them in a different way. Transplants, we already know what the quality of the crop is, and we know that it's alive, so our spacing becomes very, very important. We're going to plant these transplants. These are onions. Doesn't matter which transplant, what matters is that once I lay out the bed for the proper plant spacing, I need to do it in a way that gives these babies the best chance of succeeding. How do we do that? Well, I like to put onions, these are big ones, so I like to put them about four inches apart. 
And the way I'm going to plant them is I'm going to use one of those important tools, this one. And right in line with my string, I'm going to make a depression, the right depth for my onions. You can do this either way, but I find if the soil's moist, I prefer to put the water in the hole afterwards before I pinch it closed. This soil is very dry, so I'm going to add water to each of these holes. I can do this with plain water, or I can do this with water that's been enriched with tea. This has been enriched with something we call chicken poop soup, which is a tea that we've made to a 20% ratio with water. I'm going to take my onion, I'm going to stick it in. In this case, it's pretty dry, so I'm, I'm going to actually water it again. Uh, put my onions in there. I'm going to pinch that dirt to the top and leave a little depression right beside it. See that? Now when the rain falls, the water is on, it's going to catch just a little water right there and it'll hold the water a little better. I have two more to go, so I'm going to go ahead and... If you have a big clod in the way, just move it. Onions are ready to go. Uh, you may be wondering, in a garden situation, now out here, we've taken our compost and we have broadcast this, which means we've thrown this all over the top and then worked it into the soil. But maybe you're limited on the amount of compost you have, or you want to really use that compost uh, for your crops and not feed all any weeds with that compost. It doesn't, it won't ever hurt to broadcast it, but if you're limited, one of the things you can do is you could take a tool and open up the ground. Take the compost and lay it in right into the seed bed. Cover that back up. You see how the string provides me excellent guidance on where to plant? And I'll get my rows very straight like this. Now this is the use of the compost. You can also use various kinds of plant food, fertilizers. And we would not recommend necessarily laying, this is microlife, this is an organic fertilizer made of all kinds of interesting things like sea kelp and, and blood meal and bone meal and other things like that. I don't really recommend too much laying very much of it right into the seed bed, but a good organic compound like this won't hurt anything. What we would typically do with this, instead of what you just saw me do, is we would actually, but, but you can do it that way, what you would do is you'd open up within about an couple of inches of where you want to plant, you'd open up the ground and 
And I call this banding. And we'd lay a band of plant food right beside where we're going to plant. Cover that up. Press this to the depth that I want my seeds. Sometimes it helps just to level it up like that. Whoop. Put my ruler in. If you happen to drop two seeds every once in a while, an easy remedy, an easy way to manage that is just make the next ones a little bit further. Skip one. What you don't want to do is you don't want to bury your seed deeper than what's recommended in your seed planting guides. Because if you do that, your seed will likely not be able to penetrate the surface of the ground and you'll lose the crop that you want or you'll get much less of a crop than what you want. And that's a couple of different ways to seed, plant, feed, and transplant. I didn't water it? Well, there we go.